Crick Bars Unplugged, Adam Collins. I've got England International and Surrey T20 captain Jay Dernbeck with me here at the Oval before the start of the season. Champions last year in four-day cricket. Didn't quite get to the elimination stage of the T20s, but um, the club's in a very good place. Yeah, we certainly are, like you say. Winning the championship last year was something we were all hoping to do, and we, we certainly got ourselves over the line. But this year now, it's a different entity. We're now the hunted. People are going to be coming after us. So that comes with its own pressure. But here at Surrey, every year is pressurised in the sense that we want to challenge on all three fronts. And like you touched on before, missing out in the T20 uh, phases last year is certainly something we want to put right this year. The captain C suits you, doesn't it? You're enjoying this challenge. I do like it. It's it's definitely a different dynamic. Um, having to concentrate not only yourself, but the game situation, everyone around you, making sure things are working, came with its own sort of set of rules and, and, and things that I found difficult at times, but it's something I relish as well. Do you feel as though this could be uh, the year for Surrey with white ball cricket as well as red? I mean, I know the red ball will take care of itself with this, with this galaxy of stars you've got, but what, where's the next step happening with white ball cricket? I think the next step was Alex Stewart going out and signing two fantastic cricketers in Jordan Clark and Liam Plunkett. Obviously, everyone knows about Liam. He comes with a wealth of experience. Jordan Clark is a wonderful striker of the cricket ball, and I think just at times we may have lacked that, that power at times later on down the order, and those two guys are, are a facet in which we need it, and they come with great experience. And I think it just allows us that when the international call-ups as well come, that we've got the strength and depth within the squad to challenge. There's going to be plenty of international call-ups out of this squad. 2019, it, arguably the biggest modern year in England cricket. World Cup favourites. You've been involved in an England squad going into a global tournament before. What's it like being in an environment, so much pressure, England, so much focus, never having one of them as well? Yeah, it, it's going to come with a lot of pressure. Being it at home, I think that's the, the added bit, isn't it? But the fact that they come in with such great form, they're number one white ball side in the, in the world. They've had a balanced set of, of players, stable team, guys who are used to playing with one another. They've got a brand of cricket in which they believe in and trust in. So coming into a World Cup, I think that nothing changes. They've got to come out, perform, show what they were about, play that brand of cricket which has got them to that stage. So is that the main difference, that the mindset's changed perhaps from four years ago when, when they're a fraction more cautious? Yes, yeah, certainly so. I think the fact that there's been that stability within the squad. Guys are allowed to go out and perform their roles, play in their manner. It's not that case of looking over your shoulder every time you have a bad performance you may get dropped. I think this current squad doesn't have that. And when you lose that fear of, of failure and you lose that f fear of, of being dropped, I think you, you play your, your, your best cricket. With the benefit of hindsight, you played three years in the England white ball sides, more than 50 times you played for your country. Um, do you wish you played in this side in terms of the, 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 the rhythms of that change room? Absolutely, I think uh, I'd certainly have, have thrived in this sort of situation. When you get the confidence of the backroom staff and you get the confidence of everyone around you, the, you know, the pressure is different. The pressure to perform will always be there, but if you know that you, you're you not doing it for other reasons to try and keep yourself, yourself on the side, I yeah. think that allows you to express yourself as a player. And uh, yeah, as you, as you know, I like to express myself on the field, so it would have been an environment I would have thrived in. You're only 32. Surely your international uh, aspirations and, and, and the door is not shut on you. They, they, you must be thinking that in terms of the, the white ball summer ahead for you. Absolutely. I, I start the, every year thinking that there's an opportunity to play international cricket. I think the day that I stop believing that is the day I retire. So for me, I start every year with the, with the aim and objective to hopefully get myself back in that England side. I think I'm a far better bowler these days than I was when I played. But everybody says that, don't they? You have the ability to go away, fine tune your game. And I think my game's in as good or all as possible. You watch a lot of cricket around the world. Uh, following it and playing it and so forth in various domestic competitions. Who is going to be England's biggest threat in the World Cup? I mean, India are just a giant, aren't they? India are a giant. I think Pakistan are, you know, on their day, they, they can be anyone. And then the dark horse, of course, is the West Indies. They've got a plethora of stars. You've got the likes of Chris Gale coming back. You know, you wouldn't put it past him, would you, to, to finish up in a World Cup? to win a World Cup and to be probably man of, man of the World Cup, would you? You know, he's had that sort of career, which he can easily do that. So there's a number of fascinating sides. I think England are going to have their hands full, but they've got enough. Can you believe Australia are back in the mixer after the better part of three and a half years unable to basically win a game away from home? <laughs> they've won eight on the spin, they're beating all comers. Uh, where are they at? I think they've got momentum at the right time, haven't they? And uh, form counts for a lot. I think you want to bring some good form and momentum into a global competition as big as the World Cup. So for Australia, they're going to come in with confidence, something they haven't had for a while, like you say, with the disappointing results. But again, you, you can't rule anyone out. You know, it's, it's, you could literally put, stick your hand in a hat and pick a name out and someone could win that. That's, that's how close it's going to be. Long-term teammate and friend of Jason Roy's. He's right on the edge of that test squad. And of course, we'll have the World Cup campaign to, to, to try and prosper and, and move forward as well in the red ball game as well as the white. Um, how's he going uh, and is he ready for the next step? 
Jason Roy, with his amount of talent and ability, will always be ready for the next step. I've been lucky enough to sit here and witness him for a number of years here at Surrey be successful. People are obviously seeing him on the international stage as a white ball, dis destructive batter. I think you could, you know, you could look at Australia in that sense, you know, when David Warner came in and made such an impact, but he was allowed the opportunity to do so. Jason Roy, I think, in my opinion, has a far better technique and ability to probably change, change the Red Bull game in, th in that aspect. So if England are looking for a destructive batter to come in and make an impression in an Ashes series, Jason Roy's your man. You're in good spirits, seem very happy with, you, with your game and your place in the, in, in, the, in the Surrey setup at the moment. You must be thinking to yourself, this is, a, again, another opportunity for you to, to remind people of what you can do. Yeah, for sure. I'm feeling as good as I ever have done. You know, now it's uh, 30 odd years old, one of the senior statesmen. But, you know, worked very hard this winter with our strength and conditioning coach here, and, and I'm starting the season in a very positive frame of mind, both on and off the pitch. Jay Dan Beck, thanks for joining Creek Buzz. Thank you very much.